Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special uh, U.S. election briefing hosted by the American Society of the University of Haifa. We're back with Professor Eli Cook, senior lecturer in history and head of the American Studies program at the University of Haifa, to discuss with us this historic U.S. election uh, that, we're, that we're witnessing and still trying to navigate and figure out the results of. Um, Professor Cook, I'm sure that you haven't slept much in the last 24 hours, so thank you so much for, for being with us. Um, Lot to unpack. As it stands right now, uh, there's six states, it appears, that will, that will decide the next president of the United States, um, all which were kind of determined to be swing states in this election. Um, Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. Um, take us through, we're all too close to call right now. They're still counting their mail-in ballots and all are too close to call. Uh, but take us through a little bit what you've seen um, over the past 24 hours. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, we saw actually a bit of a surprise at first in the polls, in the, uh, or as opposed to what the polls said. I think uh, Trump's win in Florida was bigger than other people thought. Uh, his win in Texas was bigger than other people thought. One of the big surprises there was the Latino vote that actually it's looking now at exit polls that uh, Trump maybe got 30 percent of the male Latino vote. That's very high. That's a big surprise. Uh, the pollsters got that <laughs> wrong. Uh, so at the very beginning of the evening, it looked like we were going to have a redux of 2016. But as the uh, day went on, it became clear, actually, that this is actually a very different election. At first, there was this what's called this red mirage that we talked about, where the votes that were counted in the northern states, the Midwestern states, the key battleground states of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, it looked like they were going to go to Donald Trump. But actually, that was an illusion. That was because, as we said uh, before, the mail-in votes that are so crucial are about 70, 80 percent Biden voters, and they came in late, and they keep on coming in. So as of right now, only a few minutes ago, did Joe Biden finally take the lead in Wisconsin. He took the lead in Michigan. I don't think he's going to give up these leads because all that is left in these states are urban city, urban areas, and it's mostly mail-in ballots. So uh, as of right now, you can tentatively say that things are looking up for Joe Biden. And the reason I say that is that he's already won Arizona. And the importance of Arizona is that he no longer definitely needs Pennsylvania to get to 270. In fact, if you look right now at the map, and assume that he's gonna get Wisconsin and Michigan, which I don't think is a very you know, outrageous assumption, then he hits 270, uh, even without Georgia and Pennsylvania. And by the way, there's a good chance he might win Georgia and Pennsylvania outright. So what began to look like a Trump win actually shifted. You really see that actually in the betting markets. Uh, I could have made a lot of money this morning if I had bet on the betting markets, because there was a moment where it really looked like Trump was gonna win in the betting markets, and now it's completely changed. I think people are beginning to understand how to read the results. Uh, I think there was a lot of confusion at first, and now it's looking like a Biden win. And just to be clear, if, if Joe Biden wins every state that he is currently leading, he will be the, pre he will be the, the 46th president of the United States. He doesn't need to uh, win them all. He needs to win Michigan and, uh, and Wisconsin. Right. Uh, as far as uh, Pennsylvania, again, he's not leading Pennsylvania. If you look right, right now, you're like, Eli, what are you talking about? He can't win Pennsylvania. But that's the red barrage about... Three hours ago, it looked in Wisconsin like Trump was up four, now he's down. It looked like Michigan, he was up 10, now he's down. These are these mail-in votes. And we don't know when they come in. Pennsylvania, by the way, is the kind of the worst state as far as this goes. They're the worst as far as they have laws that don't let you process ahead of time. Uh, and therefore, it's going to take a lot of time. Because of that, by the way, you're not going to see today an announcement uh, either way. Uh, I think it's going to take at least another two days uh, for everything to be counted. Uh, meanwhile, of course, the other big drama today is, of course, Donald Trump's speech last night, uh, which was very clear, I think, to most uh, people who saw it, was an attempt to delegitimize the very mail-in ballots, the legitimate mail-in ballots, that are probably going to be the reason that he's going to lose. Uh, we, he's been talking about this for months. He's been planning this for months. Uh, he, he, I can't say this enough. It's just, it's a real shame as an American citizen to see a president uh, delegitimize the voting process as he has done. Uh, there are no, uh, uh, there's no proof uh, in previous elections of fraud, yet he said yesterday that there was going to be fraud. Uh, and therefore, he also uh, said he's going to go to the Supreme Court, which I actually think he might do. But the reason he's going to go to the Supreme Court, I think, is because he feels like he's trailing and he's going to want to try to cancel some of these votes. And now things could get very ugly on the legal front. 
because we're going to have lawyers on both sides, mostly from the Republican side, trying to challenge and erase votes. And all I can say is that the attorney generals of the states, the secretary of states, everyone is saying, let's count the votes. Joe Biden is saying, let's count the votes. Uh, and yet Trump is very, he creates this narrative as if if the votes didn't get in by 12 o'clock midnight or by the election day, they shouldn't count, which is, it's just outrageous. I'm sorry, I, I don't want to speak like this to the, about the American president, but I don't have any other words right now to say what, what, what I'm thinking. Professor, we know that, that Pennsylvania is a state um, that will, will likely take a couple more days because they're allowing ballots to arrive, I think, three days after election day. Is there any other state in play right now that has those same rules? Uh, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, Wisconsin's supposed to be pretty clear. I think we're going to be able to get a pretty clear, but Michigan could take some time. And by the way, I haven't even mentioned uh, Nevada isn't finished yet. North Carolina right. isn't been, hasn't been called. Georgia hasn't been called. It's going to take a while. Uh, it looks like uh, Trump's going to win North Carolina. It looks like Biden's going to win Nevada. Georgia is a complete toss up right now. Uh, so it's going to take some time. But again, if you look at Georgia, if you look at the counties, what we're missing is Atlanta. Atlanta is clearly mostly African-American and urban voters, which is uh, Biden voters. So here, too, you have to look at where the counties are that haven't been counted yet before you look at the lead that uh, uh, Trump has, because it's a bit of a, a, a tricky illusion. Right. And as you said, most of those counties that, that are still uh, counting ballots are urban areas inside of these states, which are notoriously democratic uh, in nature. Yeah. Um, There's actually two things going on. On one hand, it looks like urban cities because they're so dense, it takes them longer to count. And the mm -hmm. other thing is we know that Democrats are more afraid of the coronavirus and therefore they voted more in the mail and sometimes the mail takes longer. So there's actually two things that are working now. But so far, I can say uh, that 78% of the mail-in votes have gone to Joe Biden. So it's very clear that he has a wow. huge lead in the mail-in votes. Yeah, wow. Um, we, we, we saw, as you mentioned, President Trump um, did very well with the Latino community in Florida, presumably giving him a, a huge upper hand and winning that state in many, which, which was a surprise to many, uh, his, his, his win uh, by that margin in that state. What are some other demographics that either you were surprised about or were noteworthy that you've seen uh, thus far that either President Trump has, has done well with or, uh, or, or former Vice President Biden? Uh, so I think Trump did better with older voters than we thought he was going to do. So that's one of the reasons he won Florida. That's a state with a lot of older people. We mentioned the Hispanics. That's definitely the biggest surprise. I mean, if you look at some of these Hispanic counties in Texas, it's just crazy how, how far they flipped uh, from Hillary Clinton in 2016 to 2020. This notion that uh, just because someone's uh, an ethnic minority, that's going to make them a de Democrat, that has been completely destroyed. That is not true. And that, that's going to have real ramifications for American politics for years to come. Uh, Amer uh, a lot of Democrats thought that they might win Texas. To me, it looks like Texas is not going to be uh, in reach with it in, within the next uh, years, not only this year. Uh, the other key demographic, though, that we do see that Joe Biden is improving in is the uh, working class whites in the middle in the Midwest. This is why it looks like he's going to hold on to Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, is everyone probably remembers from the last vote, uh, Trump did very well with whites who ha don't have a, a, a college degree. And this in, and in the exit polls this time, it looks like there's a tie, which is a big win for Biden. And I think one of the key reasons that he's winning these uh, Midwest states. You mentioned the polls. It seems like the polls again got it got it wrong this time. You know, Joe, Joe Biden was leading in I think all those swing states uh, leading up. President Trump was itching a little closer, but he was leading in every swing state leading up to the election the day before. Do you think there's something inherently wrong with the way that that polls are being done, or or are they being viewed improperly and not accounting for the margin of error as much as they significantly should? Or what, why does it seem like polling is is so off? Yeah, so first of all, we're, we're going to have to wait and see how bad the polling error was because right, true. there's a lot of votes that haven't been counted. But in Florida, there is no doubt that there was a polling error. In Texas, there's no doubt. And really, I think in even Wisconsin, Biden's going to win Wisconsin, but he was supposed to win Wisconsin by like eight points. He's not going to win Wisconsin by eight points. All I can say is that this is no longer a fluke. It seems to me that there's a structural problem with the polls. Uh, there are a lot of theories being thrown out there. I think the the simplest one is that it is just really difficult to get working class uh, people to tell you what they think about the elections. Either they're at work or they don't want to answer the phone or they're afraid. I don't know if it's they're necessarily shy Trump voters or it's just that 
uh, the pollsters are having trouble reaching them. But for instance, in this election, it's very clear that the Latino male vote was uh, misconstrued. People thought it was heavily Biden and it's just not true. And that, and that has created a huge shift. Although I'll say it doesn't seem to be everywhere. It seems that there are differences between Latino voters in some areas. So for instance, one of the bigger key wins that Biden got relatively early this morning was Arizona, which is also a state that has a lot of Latino voters in it. He also looks like he's going to win Nevada, another. So it looks like it's going to be more complicated than just saying, oh, male Latino voters. It looks like there's some real differences between these demographics. And I don't think the pollsters have done a very good job of figuring out what the differences are. Professor, many, many people also um, didn't expect or expected, sorry, a blue wave in the congressional races around the country, uh, which is also not panning out in the House and in the Senate. What are you seeing in those congressional races? Yeah, I think the House definitely, they're going to, the Democrats will keep the House, but I think they're going to have less of a lead than they had, which is a big surprise. And in the Senate, it's looking more and more like uh, the Senate is going to remain Republican. And this has huge ramifications. That's almost as important as who wins the actual election. Because if Joe Biden, in the end, is going to have a Republican Senate, there is going to be le le very little that he can do. Uh, and obviously, a lot of the issues that have to do with health care, that have to do with the Supreme Court, that have to do with abortions, that have to do with uh, 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 even things like, you know, a stimulus package for the uh, coronavirus, uh, raising taxes on the rich, a minimum wage, all of these different things that we thought Joe Biden might handle, he's not going to be able to get any of this done. We know what the Republicans do once they're not in power, once they're only in the Senate, they become the party of no, and they're just going to bank on doing nothing and not allowing Biden to do anything and hope that they can win again in 2024. Uh, I, now, it's not completely over yet, but uh, it looks like they lost the Senate race. The Democrats lost the Senate race in Maine. They lost the Senate race in Iowa. They're losing the Senate race in North Carolina. There are two Senate races in Georgia. Technically speaking, if they were to win those two, then yeah, maybe they could somehow get to 50, but it doesn't look good. I don't think they're going to do it. I, in fact, I don't even think it's going to be very close. Mm -hmm. So Professor, take us through how you see these next few days playing out. Let's assume, you know, as you said, you, you think that Biden has a very strong path to the presidency at this point. Um, what, what happens then? I mean, I know that, 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 that President Trump's gonna take this to the courts. Does, does it start in the state courts and then goes to the Supreme Court? Kind of take us through how you see him and his legal team approaching this. So I have to say, first of all, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a legal expert. So I'm not really sure what the machinations are. But to me, it's very clear that what Joe Bi what uh, uh, Donald Trump is going to try to do is to stop the counting of votes as quick as possible. He's going to try to get injunctions from courts. He's going to try to cancel some of the votes. Uh, he's going to try to look for excuses to do this. Oh, this got a little wet. This, this uh, was signed in a weird way. Oh, this envelope is creased in the wrong way. Uh, and, and, and it's going to be a real question whether or not the courts are going to go along with him. And really, I think this isn't really a legal matter, I have to say. I think it's a political matter. I think the Republican judges, and there are a lot of them, might go along with Trump if it looks like he is in the driver's seat and he's going to win. But if Biden really has a fairly strong lead, I'd be surprised, uh, despite their ideological leanings, if there are going to be many courts who are really willing to do what Donald Trump wants them to do, which is basically throw out a lot of votes without any really good reason to do it. So uh, I, I, I don't know. That's why the next day or two is going to be crucial. I think if Biden can solidify his lead in Wisconsin, in Michigan, or if he can win one of Georgia or Pennsylvania, I think things begin to look differently. And I'm not sure the courts are going to go along with Trump. On the other hand, if it begins, it remains very murky and kind of, you know, Fox News is saying that Trump won and, you know, MSNBC is saying that uh, Biden won and it creates this narrative where each side of, after all, America is very polarized. So, you know, everyone is kind of gone on their different sides then I think he might be able to kind of push for these kind of uh, uh, legal uh, machinations. Uh, and again, we have to recall that it could work. I mean, without a doubt, we know that the Supreme Court now has uh, three very conservative judges that Donald Trump appointed. Uh, we've seen one of them, Judge Kavanaugh, already make some hints in some of his earlier decisions this month about maybe kind of uh, canceling or throwing out certain votes that arrive after election day, uh, even though I don't think there's much legal precedent for this. 
so, so things could still uh, be very messy. We could have a lot of surprises. And this is really the doomsday scenario. I really hope this doesn't happen because if it does happen, and if the Supreme Court somehow decides to give Trump uh, the victory, then I think we might see violence in the streets. I think we might see Biden not accepting the results. I think we might see chaos. Uh, I really hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, as, 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 uh, as do I. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Really appreciate the time. I hope you can get some, some rest soon. Um, we'll all be following this, this historic U.S. election um, as, as the next couple of days play out. And I hope we can catch up again soon. Uh, thanks yeah. so much for the time. And uh, to our viewers, um, if you have any questions to Professor Cook, please uh, do leave them in the comments section of this video and we can pass them along to him for him to answer or uh, feel free to email them at info at ASUH.org. Um, thank you all again for tuning in and please remember to stay safe. Bye-bye.